Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Great Bearded Green Beret. With winter coming, one of the things that I want to do for my next series is preparing for winter camping, preparing for winter bushcraft, being out in the woods during the winter time has its own challenges, but just because it's snowing outside doesn't mean you shouldn't be out there enjoying it. It's just a different kind of enjoyment. As the saying goes, there's no such thing as bad weather, there's only bad clothing choices. So with that in mind, and with the DIY stuff, the do-it-yourself stuff that I really like, I decided that gearing up for this winter, what I want to do is, is put together a bunch of do-it-yourself projects, you know, make my own winter moccasins, mucklucks, make my own beaver mittens, make my own anorak, you know, canvas anorak, and a few other projects, and I thought that I'd share that with you guys. What I've used is, is I looked for kits that you could also get. My friends up at Lure the North, uh, they're up in Espanola, Ontario, so up in Canada. They're, they're about two full parallels north of where I'm at here in the Adirondacks. So I'm at 44, I think they're at 46. So a little further north, uh, and let's just say they know a little bit about winter camping and winter trekking. So they put together kids. It's a, it's a really nice young couple, Dave and Kyla Marone, uh, up there. And what they do is they test all of their gear on these big, massive expeditions. We're talking, you know, up to 40 days out in the winter. Uh, and, you know, they go up to upwards of 250 kilometers. It's about, you know, 155 miles for those of you who don't speak metric, you know. So they've tested this stuff and it works. And one, I like that they test it. Two, I like the DIY aspect of it. So I'm going to put together a bunch of their kits and get ready for my own winter camping and winter bushcraft this winter. And I'm going to share that with you. So the first project that I'm going to do is I'm going to make my traditional winter moccasins. So I've got a couple of kits from those guys. One of those kits being a canvas upper. It's called, if you look on their website, lowerthenorth.com. It's called the DIY moccasin kit with canvas uppers, right? You can also do hide uppers if you'd rather not really bring the sewing machine into it. The hide uppers are designed to have little to no, you know, sewing machine use, but I'm not afraid of a sewing machine. I've known my way around one. Uh, so I thought I'd start with the canvas uppers. And I also have the rubber sewing kit because there are a couple more parallels north of me. So they tend to hit that dry cold, you know, where it's not so wet as it is down here sometimes. They tend to hit that a little bit early. You know, so for me, you know, not only wanted to kind of waterproof the bottom of the moccasins a little more, uh, but also, you know, that rubber sewing kit prolongs the life of a handmade thing, something that you made, uh, it prolongs the life of it uh, quite a bit. So I got the rubber sewing kit as well that I'm going to show you guys. Uh, and with that, I'm going to show you guys and kind of take you along the journey of me making mine. I'm going to be following the instructions that they send and the instructions that they have on their YouTube channel. So if you've not checked out their YouTube channel, if you wanna see some really cool winter expedition, winter camping, uh, you wanna see some of that stuff, aside from the instructional things, that's over on their channel. I recommend you go over to Lower the North and give them a sub, watch a couple of their videos and check them out. Really cool people uh, doing a lot of great things up there. So I wanted their kits because they've tested them in the field and I wanna put those together using their instructions. So. With that said, the DIY moccasin kit that I have, what that comes with, you know, first and foremost, it comes with color instructions that are bound, really nice set of instructions, really detailed set of instructions, and there's also instructional videos that are linked on their website, lowerthenorth.com, and there's also, uh, you know, you can search for those in here if you want to get a little more information on how that not go. You know, how'd you do that particular stitch? What's the next step? The really detailed step-by-step -step instruction, I'm gonna direct you to their channel because that's what I'm going to be using along with the instructions that come with the kits to put mine together. What I'm not gonna do is reproduce their step-by-step, -step, you know, paint by number kind of things. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how I made mine, showing you that these kits are very easy for anyone with little to no experience to put together. So, for the winter moccasins, you actually have two particular, you have two different books because you have to make a hide lower, you know, out of the, out of the deer hide, which is really, really nice deer hide. Uh, but you're going to make your lowers out of that. And they're very similar to a pair of summer moccasins. Uh, and then you're going to put a canvas upper on those. Those are your gaiters that keep snow from getting down inside those. So essentially you're making a soft boot, which is what a muckluck is. Uh, so you've got Instructions for the lowers, instructions for the uppers, um, and 
And just to kind of go through the kit contents, what it has, of course you've got, you know, I believe it's about five square feet of some really nice soft deer skin. Uh, you can choose the colors. Uh, there's a lot of different choices you can have. You can customize your moccasins however you want. They're really nice, really nice hide, ready to go. Uh, of course, you've got some canvas to make your uppers. Uh, you've got a lot of different laces and cords that go for tying and hemming that up. Uh, you've got some decorative trim that you can also choose the pattern that you want uh, for your decorative, decorative trim. You're going to have some artificial sinew which basically mimics animal sinew. It's just a lot easier to source and a lot easier to use. So you have that. You have a couple of scraps of leather that's got their logo on it with uh, a couple of sail, they're basically sail needles, they're basically canvas needles. They're triangular uh, glover's needles is actually what they are. So you have a couple of those. Uh, then of course you've got the instructions that I've shown you. And uh, then you've got paper patterns they come in a lot nicer than this, but I was making a bunch of summer moccasins using those patterns uh, just to brush up on my sewing skills again because it's been a long time. Uh, so you've got all that, and then in addition to that, it used to be a separate kit. The insulation portion of it used to be a separate kit, but now it's included in the cost of your winter moccasins, but you're going to get felted wool insoles and felted wool liners all right and those are specifically sized the rest of it you cut to your size okay so really easy to order these kits comes complete with that and the insulation kit now uh, and then the rubber soling kit is extra that is basically you know to prolong the life of your your moccasins and that is very simply recycled rubber that's basically ground along with some really strong contact cement and a brush to brush those soles on. And what you end up with is a really nice, soft, supple sole that, that protects the light, that protects the, the, the hide that's on the lower portion uh, and really prolongs that. And it kind of gives it a little bit of waterproofing on the very bottom, you know, so if you're walking across some, some damp ground, it's not gonna soak your, your moccasin as badly. Uh -oh. But anyway, that is what comes in the kit. That's what I'm using. Let's start putting it together. And I've already sized these and then I took the paper patterns one for the sole, one for the vamp. And I measured into a five and a five, so I just cut those paper soles out, or cut those paper patterns out, traced them out on the leather, and then I cut those out. I'm gonna be soling the bottom of these, so I want the rough side of these to be down, kind of on the outside, as far as for the sole, but for the vamp, you know, the smaller piece that becomes the tongue, I want the smoother side to be facing up, so it'll kind of look like this when they're finished. So what I'm going to do is tack those two together. A couple of things that I recommend you do. Uh, first off, I recommend that you make yourself a thimble. All right, this one's made out of some scrap buckskin, uh, but there's enough leather in the kits that you could make this on your own. But this does a couple of things for you. One, you follow along on the video on Lord of the North, and it shows you the whip stitch that you're going to use throughout the project you know so you get to practice that stitch on kind of a, a little simple project such as a thimble uh, it also teaches you how to tie the knots you know along with you know setting your needle up so that you can do the whip stitch that you're going to use throughout uh, so I recommend you have this thimble, the, this thimble, this thimble as well uh, and probably a couple other tools that I can recommend to you um, the canvas needles or I should say the leather needles the glovers needles that come with the kit for my hands in particular, uh, being that I don't sew a whole heck of a lot, uh, they were a little small for me. So I had some larger leather needles from some of the other leather projects that I do. So I kind of went with this because it's easier for me to use. Not that you can't use the ones that come with the kit. Uh, I just found that a bigger needle was easier for me personally to use. So I use that. Uh, I also, for other leather projects, I typically use an awl so that I can kind of get the hole started and this is better than a punch because a punch actually removes natural fibers that are found in that skin that hide and this actually just pushes them to the side and so that you can get through them a lot easier and then they close back up all right so this may come in handy for some of those stubborn parts of the project and a pair of needle nose pliers I have found that if my needle gets stuck in there and it's hard to pull out 
if I pull on it really hard with my fingers, eventually my fingers start getting sore and I can grab that needle real quick, not at the sharp part obviously, but at the base and kind of pull that through. So it might help you, uh, might not, you know, but the biggest thing that if you're not used to sewing a lot and not used to sewing leather a lot, uh, leather a lot, what you don't want to do is have your fingers end up hurting because if your fingers end up hurting, well then your back's just going to hurt because you'll pull landscaping duty. With the artificial sinew, basically what you've got is four strands. And I'm going to pull myself out enough to get this tacked. And what I'm going to do is separate that. So kind of split it in half. To get it started, it's real easy to do. Split that right down the middle. Set that to the side because you will need it. Then I'm going to thread that needle. like so. Now, once I get this needle threaded, I've got a short end and a long end. I'll leave about four to five inches on that shorter end out of the way. Then you take the longer end, cross it over that needle and kind of pinch it right there. So that makes this big loop out here. And then I'll take that loop and I'll wrap it around five or six times. Then once that's wrapped around, grab the whole kit and caboodle, pull it down over the eye of the needle, and I'll pull it down to the end, and I'll end up with a good knot right there on the end. Don't need a whole lot of excess, so I'll trim that off. But that is the knot we're going to use every time we have to thread and re-thread the needle. What I want to do is I want to tack the vamp and the sole together. And on those patterns, you'll see little tick marks that I've transferred to the side. And that's on the vamp and on the sole. And all you've got to do is line that up tick mark on tick mark and tack it at that point and then you pull this up tack the other tack the other alright so I'll go ahead and start at the top and what I want to do is come down about an eighth of an inch because I want my knot to be hidden on the inside pull that through all the way till the knot is there then I'm going to come through right at that mark on the vamp and pull those two together. Now I'm going to come down for every one of these whip stitches here. I'm actually going to go through twice. And for the tack, I'm going to go through three times. Three times around, same holes putting the tension I want on it. There we go. That's twice. Same hole for a third time. Once I get through, when I'm finishing any of these stitches, I'm going to leave myself a loop. I'm going to go through that loop with the needle once, twice, essentially creating a round turn. And when I pull that tight, it's going to tie it off in a nice knot. Clip off my excess, and that part is tacked. Got a snag leave myself a loop to go through once twice that puts in my round turn tighten that up and that knots it right there clip off the excess stubborn 
spot. Three. Put in my round turn to lock it off. Tighten it down. All right, so that is the beginning of the lower for my winter moccasin. Now from here, I'm gonna begin puckering from here down to this tack, all right? So what I wanna to get to is a point to where this is straight and the rest of this is puckered in to this front portion. And then I'm gonna to go to this side first. So I'm gonna come back in here, hide my knot on the inside, And then what I want to do is fold the material into a small pucker. Like so. I've got that small little pucker right there. Then I'm going to come through the vamp into the sole and capture that pucker get my tension. I've came through once. I'm going to go through twice on every pucker. Get through my second one. Get my tension correct and that captures that pucker. From there I'll fold it over again creating my next pucker. And then making sure that I'm moving along the vamp away from where I've already gone through. I'll come over a little bit more. Go through both the vamp and the sole. Once. Twice. Get my tension. And now I've got two puckers. And I'll continue that along. Making sure that I move along the vamp and trying to keep fairly equal puckers. Alright, so I've puckered all along the front side of the moccasin on the left hand side as I'm looking at it. And now I've got to where my seam is actually straight together. There's no more material that needs to be puckered in. So what I'll do is just a simple whip stitch, just going through one time now, about an eighth inch in and about an eighth inch away from the pass previous to that. Nope, oh, came out. Rethread that real quick. Do a simple single pass whip stitch over the top all the way up to this tack. Once I get up to that tack, I'm not going to bother taking that out because that's a stress point on the moccasin when you're taking it on and off. So I'll just go through there. I will come through that one a second time at the tack. And then I'm going to start making my way back down to the puckers. Going back through and I'm going to create kind of an X pattern on top here which you'll see as I go along. Sorry to run out of sinew. I'm going to have to go longer on those threads next time. I'm going to get to that back to the puckers. As you might have guessed, I'll go through twice.
And on the third time I'll leave a loop so I can do my round turn. Get really low on sinew. Definitely need to make that longer next time. Because I want to be able to go through three times and finish that off with my round turn like I did before. Might be a little hard to see, but you've seen me do it on the tacks. Once I come through, perfect. Tighten those down. Trim off that excess. Now for this side, I'll come up underneath there. Hide that knot again. And then once I've got that knot hidden, I'm going to start puckering the other direction. And this side for me is a little bit trickier, but that's okay. Everybody apparently has a weak side and a strong side when it comes to puckering. And I am by no means looking for perfection. Sometimes those little flaws are what make handmade projects, you know, DIY stuff that much more attractive, in my opinion. The little flaws are all kind of part of the experience. Not bad. Now I've got one to lay my next pucker up against and it gets a little easier. All right, so I got both of the front sides completed. Now I'm just gonna put my insulating layers back on and I'm gonna measure out where I'm gonna cut the heel and then I'm gonna sew those up. All right, so in order to customize the size of these moccasins, what I did was put my insulating layers back on the insole. I pulled everything tight. I wrapped the back sides of these around and kind of measured how much how much excess I was going to have to cut off and trim that excess off keeping in mind that that's a half measurement because when you overlap it and wrap it around like you'll see in Lord of the North video you know that is a side seam and I want this seam to end up in the center so I just and cut up I just take half of that measurement off once I mark it uh, and then it comes out just fine then I remeasure it to make sure that this seam in the back just just closes and that it's in the center trim as needed then from there uh, a couple of different measurements you know from the center basically put those two together mark the center then after the center is marked using that as a reference point i go three quarters of an inch both ways three quarters of an inch in and then i cut those out and that gives me a fully customized fit a uh, nice tight fit so that after i get done sewing these up and these have had time to stretch they're going to fit extremely well so once i have this point now all i need to do is sew those up now i'm going to sew this back seam 
I want to make sure that these are nice and even. I have a little stretch if I have to, that looks good. I want to hide the knot starting at what will be the top of the moccasin, eighth of an inch still. I'm going to hide the knot in there. A little extra, a little extra thread I don't want. And then because this is the top, I'm going to kind of tack it by going through a couple of times. Again, paying attention to the spacing and the tension. I go through once. Go through a second time. Pull that nice and tight. Maybe not that tight. Must have ran through my artificial sinew with a needle and cut it. Easy fix. Retie. Hide that knot again. Put that seam together. I'll go through a third time just to tack that a little better since that's the top. There we go. Get my tension. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow along this edge and do a single whip stitch all the way down to the end. Making sure Keep those together. I want you to get the hang of this. It's actually pretty fast. You can whip out a pair of moccasins, summer moccasins anyway, in just a few hours. It's like anything, the more you do it, the faster you get at it. Once I get to the end, same as I always finish, come through once, twice, third time leaving that loop. And then back through that loop twice to make that round turn. Pull tension on that and cinch that knot right down. 
trim off the excess. So now I've got my seam running right down the back, but those are folded this way. So I'm going to take my thumbs and I'm going to push that seam together so that the edges are meeting. I kind of stretch and push. Really dig your thumbs down in there and you'll end up with a nice seam running right up the back side of your moccasin. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this heel crescent and I'm going to fold that up over and stitch that on using a closed whip stitch this time. These were open whip stitches. This is going to be a closed whip stitch which is the same motion but instead of being able to come up and come around like you were, you're going to have to come from the inside. And the other key part of this is not to try to put those seams together. This folds up and over that back seam to form your heel crescent. So I'm going to hide my knot in here, right up here in the corner. I want my knot to end up on the inside, like so. I'm going to fold this heel crescent up over the seam. Now I'm coming out through one layer of material. I'm going to go back in through both layers of material to the inside. that through. Get my tension. I'm going to come back through one layer of material. Since this is the first stitch, going to go through a second time out through one in through both and then I'm back to my closed whip stitch feel around where that's going to come out there we go. Out through one. Back in through two. I'll continue that on around. That was my second to last stitch there. So to finish it off, come down on my last stitch and because this is a closed whip stitch this time, finish it off a little bit different but not much. I'll come through still come through three times in that last hole that's twice
And then this time when I come back through from the inside, for that third pass, I'm going to leave just a little bit of a loop here on the inside that I can finish off and have my knot on the inside. So I'll go through, leave that small little loop right there, so that when I come through for my third pass, Now on the inside, I can come through that loop with my round turn, going through twice to finish it off. And my knot is on the inside. There's my center seam. And there's my heel crescent. Now that I've got my heels sewn up and I sewed on my heel crescents, it's time for me to sew on my heel tabs and that's going to be used for the lacing of the gaiters which are the uppers of these winter moccasins that I'm going to do. Uh, so basically I took some of the scrap that I had trimmed off the back of these and just cut a couple of tabs. These are one inch by one and a half inch tabs and I'm going to sew those onto the back here. And this is going to be sewn on just a little bit down from the top edge of the moccasin. And it's just going to be another closed whip stitch from side to side and along the bottom. And that'll leave a channel for that lacing to go through. But I'm going to go ahead and flip this with the smooth side out rather than the rough side just to give it a little contrast. A little artistic flair if you will. I'm sewing this upside down as you probably would so that you get a better angle on it. The second one always goes much faster because I don't have to film it. And I can turn it the way most folks would turn it to sew it. And towards the end, close it off just like every other. go through three times. When I go through the second time, leave my little loop on the inside. Like so. So when I come through the third time, I can do my round turn inside that loop. Tighten it down. And trim it off. Now I'll reset that needle. And I'll sew along the bottom edge just like that. Now I've got my heel tab on. Now to do the other one. Alright, so I put these back on and made sure that you know, the seams and the tacks were exactly where I wanted it. Do any adjustments I need. These came out great. So, this is a lot of excess tongue that I don't need because I'm going to attach canvas uppers to this. So what I'm going to do is trace out a slight arc from tack to tack. And I'm going to cut that extra material off. Alright, so I've completed my lowers. I've got my puckered fronts. I've trimmed the tongues off. The heel seams are complete. Heel crescents are sewn on and the heel tabs as well. Alright folks, that took me a few hours and keep in mind I had to film it, but I've also made moccasins before. Uh, so you can expect your lowers to take a few hours uh, but you know for a DIY project that could last several years if you protect them uh, I think it's well worth that time so uh, they fit perfectly uh, there was plenty of extra material I've got you know a lot of extra artificial sinew that was included in the kit 
and I've got quite a bit I mean they're not stingy with the supplies and quite a bit of extra leather here that I can use for other projects this looks like a new possible pouch to me uh, but anyway the the kits were outstanding uh, the instructions were very clear being the print instructions the print instructions as well as the video instruction on the lore of the north channel so again i recommend that you subscribe to them even if you don't want to do these projects there's a lot of really cool winter expedition style videos on there that i think you guys will enjoy uh, but you know really really happy with how these came out and i'm only done with the lowers but the video is getting a little long uh, so i'll just break this up into a couple of different videos as far as making my uppers from here uh, and then uh, sewing the bottom of them to protect it um, and if you know winter isn't your deal if it's not your environment uh, but you are interested in making your own uh, i basically use the same instructions and some buckskin that i had on hand and actually made a pair of summer moccasins which they also have kits for if you don't have buckskin or if you don't have the instructions like i had and the patterns that i had for the winter moccasins you know that very easily translates into some really nice summer moccasins i made these for my wife uh, just before i made these uh, but anyway uh, if winter is not your deal but you want to make your own you can get a summer moccasin kit also diy and that is put together very similar to what i just showed you to make the lowers for your winter mocks so outstanding kits outstanding instructions and outstanding people up at lower the north so i recommend you check out their channel i'll put a link to their channel in the description below if you found this information useful i recommend that you subscribe click on my logo down in the lower left hand no, lower right hand side of your screen click on my logo at any time hit subscribe allow all notifications and you'll be notified when my next video comes out thanks for watching until next time hope to see you in the woods